Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Synod Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. Our goal is to know the truth and to hold on to the truth and to speak the truth. Our goal is to avoid the sins of the mouth, false doctrine about God and false testimony about other people. Remembering that God will judge our words, but not in such a way as there is no hope. God will forgive our words as much as he forgives our thoughts and actions, all for the sake of Jesus Christ who died for us. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning, I'm Pastor Matt Thompson from Holy Cross and St. John's Lutheran Churches in Bismarck and McCluskey, North Dakota. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The epistle reading is from the book of James, chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, 
a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. The tongue is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. James 3, 8 and 9. The Christian recorder of March 1862 printed the following, Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never harm me. True courage consists in doing what is right, despite the jeers of our companions. With this slogan, an attempt is made to make Christian children strong in their resistance to the criticisms of the culture. Children who are mocked for their Christian faith should take courage that the approval of Christ is of much greater value than the approval of classmates. The world will never speak well of Christ or his church. Therefore, take no heed of the world. As Jesus said, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, Therefore, the world hates you, John 15, 19. We must face reality. The world will never speak well of Christ or his church. Listen not to the world and do not be disturbed or discouraged by the negative words of the world. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never harm me. Good advice from the Christian recorder of 1862. Do not let the words of unbelievers deter you in your faith. That being said, we should not get the impression from this slogan that words cannot hurt or harm. Words absolutely can hurt and words absolutely can harm. The fact that we must have courage and strength to ignore and overcome the negative words of the world is evidence that negative words can do harm if we do not ignore and overcome them. Words have power. Words are important. On the one hand, God created the world through the words of creation. God is saving the world through the words of the gospel. Good words are a force for good in the world. On the other hand, evil words are a force for evil in the world. The devil is a liar and a murderer and has been since the beginning, wielding a sword of deception, hurting and harming the world through lies. The devil kills souls through his words, which are lies. As Jesus said, the devil was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John 8, 44. False words can hurt the soul, and the devil hurts and harms through lies and deceptions. Words are like weapons against the soul, and they most certainly can hurt and harm, and we must stand strong against them and not let them overcome us. Put on, therefore, as Paul says, the belt of truth, and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, the word of truth. For instance, false doctrine about God hurts and harms the soul. That's why we have a second commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name. But call upon it in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give thanks. The second commandment is a divine command to speak the truth about God. False doctrines are lies and deceptions of the devil that hurt the soul. False doctrine can lead a soul to unbelief, despair, and other great shame and vice. False doctrine about God is dangerous. Also, False accusations about other people can ruin a reputation. That's why we have the Eighth Commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor 
We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. The Eighth Commandment is a divine command to speak only well about other people. Betrayals and slanders come from the devil. They hurt people as much, if not more, than sticks and stones. The truth is, words can hurt and harm both body and soul. As Jesus said, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10:28. Because of this, truth is important. Speaking and teaching the truth, hearing and holding on to the truth, knowing and believing the truth. The truth is important. And because of this, God's word is important. As Jesus said, your word is truth. John 17, 17. And so in our reading this morning from James 3, we are warned to be careful with our words. James begins with a warning for teachers. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. James 3. Here James gives warning to teachers. Teachers will be held accountable to God for what they teach. Pastors from the pulpit, Sunday school teachers in the classroom, father and mother in the home, all Christians who share their faith with their friends and neighbors out in the world. What we say about God and the world is important and we will be held accountable for our words. We will be judged by God, not only by our thoughts and our actions, but by our words as well. As Jesus warned the Pharisees, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil, I tell you. On the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Matthew 12, 34 to 37. Here Jesus speaks of the necessity to control our words and our tongue and to be more careful. No one, of course, is perfect in what he does or says, but... Because we are aware of this, we should be slow to speak and much more careful. Better to be silent than to sin with our words. Better to listen than to sin with our words. Why? Because the tongue is powerful and dangerous. As James says, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also, though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness, the tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. James 3, 3 to 6. The tongue is like a bit put into the mouth of a horse. The tongue is like the rudder on a ship. The tongue is like a spark that sets a forest ablaze. A large horse is controlled by a small bit. A large ship is directed by a small rudder. A large forest can be set ablaze by a small spark. So also, the small tongue can have a great impact on your life. 
A single, well-spoken word can bring wonders in the world for good. A single, poorly spoken word can ruin your life. Words are powerful and dangerous, and because words are powerful and dangerous, and because man is by nature sinful, extra care must be taken. As James says, for every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grape vine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. James 3, 7 to 12. Here James laments our situation. We are saint and sinner at the same time. With our one mouth, we both bless God and curse people. We praise the Lord in church on Sunday morning, and then we curse the world and speak unspeakable words about other people Monday through Saturday. This should not be. Time to repent. Time to become much more careful in our words. Time also to turn to Christ for mercy and forgiveness. In Isaiah 6, the Lord sends an angel to the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from the altar. The burning coal is taken by the angel to the prophet Isaiah and it touches his lips. And the angel says, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Isaiah 6, 7. Here we find the Lord coming to Isaiah and healing his mouth, forgiving his sins of speech and the iniquity of his words. As a prophet, Isaiah's words are the basis of his vocation and calling. Because of this, misspoken words are among his greatest sins. Can God forgive what we have said? Is God willing to forgive our misspoken words? Of course he is. Isaiah 6 teaches this very thing. And so he touches our lips and he forgives. Sunday after Sunday, we gather in church to hear the word of forgiveness and to receive the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins, his grace and mercy literally touching our lips. The body of Christ touches our lips and takes away our sin. The blood of Christ touches our lips and takes away our guilt. All of our sins were atoned for at the cross even our sinful words. All of our sins are cleansed in the Lord's Supper, even our sinful words. That is our hope in the face of misspoken words. Our reading this morning, then, is a helpful reminder of God's will for us to keep control over our mouths, knowing the power of words. Our goal is to know the truth and to hold on to the truth and to speak the truth. Our goal is to avoid the sins of the mouth, false doctrine about God, and false testimony about other people. Remembering that God will judge our words, but not in such a way as there is no hope. God will forgive our words as much as he forgives our thoughts and actions, all for the sake of Jesus Christ who died for us. And so we turn to Christ for forgiveness and grace when we misspeak, and we seek the Spirit who speaks truth in his word. Amen. Now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by hearing God's word. If you are able to attend local services, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in the Bismarck or McCluskey, North Dakota area, please join us at Holy Cross or St. John's Lutheran Church Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. in McCluskey and 10.30 a.m. in Bismarck. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.